she understood mm. that beekeeping was a worldwide mm. activity. And I think this is one of her strengths. was Eva Crane. You used to know her, didn't you? Oh yes. Um, and she was she was born as Eva Widdison mm -hmm. in South London. Um, I I don't know when she she moved to Hull. Her first house in Hull. And I assume that, that was when she married. Um, her, her husband, because the story is that she was given um, a beehive as a wedding present. Mm -hmm. Now, I think she was lecturing at that time. She was either lecturing in Hull or Sheffield, but her, her academic qualifications were um, um, nuclear physics or something right. in that sort of area. Right, not really connected with no, beekeeping no, at all. No, no, not no. really. And she got herself involved with the research committee of the British Beekeepers in about 46, 47, 48. And then they took over um, what was Bee World. Mm. Um, and uh, it was from that that the Bee Research Association started. And they moved to, presumably because her husband, I think, was in shipping. I think he was something like that, Cray Insurance in Shipping, but I might be wrong. And um, they moved to the south of England, and <coughs> they they um, lived in the in the Thames Valley. Wow. And I first met Eva when she was at Hill House, um, and she was very supportive of Northern Bee Books because she used to allow us to have a a lot of books on on uh, on extended credit, shall we say? Right. Presumably because she couldn't sell them, she thought somebody else could sell right. them. Because she's somewhat prodigious output. Oh yes, yes. I mean, look. But only later. Oh right. Only later. I mean, when she, <coughs> I think the strength of Eva was that she was a networker, right? And she had the ability to bring in people to work with her. Yeah. Um, and it was only later that she started her output because when when she started. Um, it was Bee World, and then there was Apicultural Abstracts. They had seven or eight ladies working in, in, mm. at, at Hill House. Um, I don't know whether they did it voluntarily, but, yeah. but she developed around her a very, very good team of people. Yeah. Uh, and of course, one of those teams, one of the team was Carl Scholler, who started working with BRA, the Research Association, yeah. before it was called International. Carl Scholler and his wife, Betty, were the publications officer. And they used to, not only did they publish a magazine, but they used to take extracts from that magazine yeah. and, and issue them separately. Right. <coughs> and, and it was only later that she got into publishing in a big way. Right. The first book that she did was this one, which, right. which actually, it, she edited it. This is a, um, a collection of experts talking about honey. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's so good because it, 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 it didn't just cover the American market, but it covered Germans and the, Europe the Europeans yeah. and, and uh, England. And, and uh, this still is available yeah. um, as a, a reprint from, from IBRA. Right. Um, but that was the thing. And then she went on to produce her, her other books. I think the first one she produced was... Archaeology of Beekeeping. I think this is a very good book, very interesting. Yeah. And, and later it followed with Bees and Beekeeping and 
the world history of honeybees, uh, of honey and hunting. And uh, they are amazing. They, they, will, they will be collected in a hundred years' time. Yeah. Um, because they are completely unique. She um, strikes me as a really good historian of pulling together oh, yeah. what is a kind of a universality of beekeeping yes. around the world. I'm in the process of reading this book, which is the nearest you get to an yes. autobiography, yes. but also the fact she's travelled through 60 countries yes, yes. and also travelling at that point in time post-war, yes. as the world was changing, yes. and also being a woman yes, on your own, yes. man's world. So it's a fascinating yeah. thing of arriving and taking 24 hours to cross the Atlantic via Ireland, Iceland, yes. Yes. Nova Scotia, America, things yes, like that, yes. and just rocking up in places and giving yeah. a tour. Yeah. We had a stand at Apermondia in Melbourne. I wasn't there, but Ruth was there. And <coughs> because of the cost of sending books, mm. We, we hadn't taken an awful lot of books. Mm. And on the first day of Apermondia, it was announced that Eva Crane had died. Right. Immediately, all our books by her sold in an instant. Right. And uh, everybody over there had heard of Eva Crane. She was she an was, uh, amazing woman, amazing woman. And, and, uh, um, and she, she was also fairly straight... Uh, Straight talking, I, I know of an author who was to write a book on um, women in American beekeeping. And when she went to explain to Eva what she was doing, mm. Eva said, it'll be a very thin volume, dear. <laughs> you, <laughs> you normally wouldn't say that to a, an author, but uh, she cut this particular author, not cut her down to size, yeah. but uh, <coughs> was realistic and... Uh, but no, she, her, her books are, are much sought after and mm. none of them are, apart from the, the honey, mm. they're not in print, which is a shame. Mm. Um, but uh, I don't know whether they'll ever come back into print. So if you want a, a copy, you have to buy them in the second-hand market and right. they're not cheap. She understood mm. that beekeeping was a worldwide mm. activity. Yeah. She didn't just look in England. Yeah. Um, and I think this is, this is one of her, uh, her strengths. Probably it came back to her academic background. Yeah. Humans' relationship with bees goes yeah. back millennia, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Cats and dogs, yeah. basically because they hung around the campfire. Yeah. But bees yeah. uh, or honey-giving insects in dark and miserable times of human existence, you yeah. come along with a pot of honey, yeah. this golden, yeah. bewitching yes. material that tastes sweet. Yeah. Um, it imbues all sorts of magical properties to it. And so she documents that for me. I find that quite fascinating yeah. in terms of historically how she's drawn all those threads together. I think in Luxor, in, which is Lower Egypt or Upper Egypt or whatever, mm. however you look at Egypt, I think there's honey, so references to honey in some of the, the carvings there, you yeah. know, and that's going back. Manchester Museum has some hieroglyphics yes, yeah. and one possibly the oldest beehive so far discovered. Yeah. There's a clay pipes which are similar to the type of beehives that are used yeah. in that part of the world with traces of propolis and wax in it. Yes. A real fascinating history of our relationship and also it's not just a Eurocentric one because you have that relationship with insects yeah. which aren't necessarily like Apis mellifera yeah. in South America and places with stingless bees. You see, she drew our attention to this. Yeah. Yeah. This was the, the important thing about her, that, that she created this body mm. before the internet, mm. which was a, a world resource for beekeepers. Mm. Um, now it's been overcome by, overtaken, not overcome, overtaken by mm. uh, modern technology, so you don't actually need written Oh, you, you need the written work, but you don't actually need it on paper and you can access it. Yeah, she was an amazing, amazing lady. It's, uh... If you had to say one book that people are going to take the Eva Crane, which would it be? I think probably Bees and Beekeeping. Right. That, I think that's her most important. The one I like, the archaeology, I think that's a lovely book. 
And of course, Honey is still available. And, yeah. and also her little book, The Book of Honey. It's written for a general audience. Yeah. And so it's not so technical as yeah. it's a big one. And that's still available in, in print. So, good.